Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel Pharmacology Simplified. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the pathophysiology of cancer. We have been hearing the word cancer, neoplasia, tumors, a lot. And most of these words are being used synonymously, but uh, this is actually not correct. Uh, all these words, uh, they differentiate uh, each, uh, from each other, they are different from each other. And one more thing I would like to say that if you want to uh, study cancer just for passing or clearing your examinations, I would recommend you skip this video. Uh, there is no point of uh, spending your time into this video. But yes, if you really want to understand the complete pathophysiology of the cancer and if you want to understand the pharmacology of the drugs that use for managing uh, cancer, uh, I would strongly recommend that you do not skip any part of this video. Right. So, uh, I was talking about a few words. Right. So, uh, if I'm saying uh, like uh, I have talk I'm talking about these three words, right? So the word neoplasia. Neo means new, new growth. Whenever there is new growth of the cell, but that has to be uncontrolled. If the growth is controlled, this is a physiological process. Like uh, in our body, every day thousands or not thousand, like billions of cells they uh, die and they are produced every day, right? But if there is an uncontrolled growth of those cells, uh, of, of our body cells, then it is called as neoplasia, right? For example, if I take, see, if this is an area that I'm talking about, there were, these were the cells that were present in this area. These are the cells, right? So every day, few of these cells, they were dying and few new cells were uh, being produced. But what happened, the growth, it, it got uncontrolled, right? So instead of this, these cells, for example, they took the structure something like this. So for example, they took like this shape, this shape they took. So the whole morphology of the organ has changed, right? What we are seeing here earlier, the organ that was of this size, now the size has increased. Now this size, this can be easily observed. And this will be perceived as a tumor. Tumor is basically a cluster of cells, right? So neoplasia can lead to tumor. And when, see, uh, we have to understand this. If a, this is one structure and this is one structure, if the base for both is same, then this structure will be more unstable. This will be more unstable. Why? Because it can wobble here and it can wobble here. It can go into any direction. And hence, if you are having, for example, we had this much amount of cells and we have this much amount of cells. So there are very high possibilities that uh, some segment of this, of this, it may break off and it may travel to some other part of the body, right? And this process of moving these cells is called as metastasis, right? So whenever in a tumor, whenever in a tumor, there is metastasis, then this is called as cancer, right? So cancer is uncontrolled multiplication of the cells and spreading of those cells to other organs of the body. This is called as cancer. Right? So I think uh, we are clear with these words, like what is the difference between neoplasia, tumor and cancer. Right? So now when we talk about tumors, tumors, they can be of two types. First are your benign tumors and other are your malignant tumors. Right? So benign and malignant tumors. Benign is like when the tumor or the cell mass is localized. Right? then it is localized. It is not spreading everywhere. It, it has not spread out everywhere. Then it is called as localized tumor or it is called as benign tumor. Benign tumor are not cancerous because these tumors, as I have just said, they are localized. So they do not metastasize to other parts of the body. Hence, they are not cancerous. But benign tumor over a period of time, they become malignant because they go from this stage to this stage. So these benign tumors, they be convert into malignant tumors. Why? 
because these malignant tumors have the ability to migrate to other parts of the body or what they do they do metastasis right so uh, i think we are clear with this uh, let me uh, say it again neoplasia is new growth of the cells tumor is a cluster of cells that arise from neoplasia and cancer is the condition right cancer is the condition where this tumor cells right where these new uh, new cells they can metastasize they can metastasize to some other parts of the body right so uh, these are uh, benignant uh, the tumors they can be benign and malignant benign tumors are localized while malignant tumors a part of those tumors it can break off and after it breaks off it can go to some other part of the body right and the approaches and uh, yes and these malignant tumors they are called as cancerous and the approaches uh, for managing cancer uh, they are surgical uh, they are radiation gamma radiations are used and they are uh, chemotherapy right but uh, we are not discussing here uh, surgical and the radiation methods we would be discussing only the chemotherapy in the next lecture right the question arises why cancer is so difficult to treat see when we talk about the uh, chemotherapy for antimicrobials right uh, chemotherapy of uh, for uh, bacteria so one thing that we clearly see for example this is a human cell and for example this is a bacterial cell right so this is very clear that the machinery of human cell and the machinery for bacterial cell they both will function in a different manner right human cells will function differently they will have a whole to, uh, they will all together have a different biochemistry while the bacterial cell will have a different biochemistry and the difference in these biochemistries right of the human cell and the bacterial cell they are exploited and we develop agents that will interfere only with the bacterial cells or not or to a lesser extent with the human cells or no no interaction with the human uh, bi cell biochemistry at all but the difference or we can say the problem in managing cancer is this that the cells that we are dealing with are not foreign cells they are the indigenous cells of the body that have mutated that have mutated and they have become autonomous autonomous means that they are not under the regular control processes of the body they are dividing on their own they are uh, proliferating on their own they are doing everything on their own right and they skip the apoptosis pathways and apoptosis as we all know apoptosis is a programmed cell death like whenever a cell gets old or it loses its functional capacity then the cell activates several mechanisms that kill the cell right and over a period of time what happens that one cell that was healthy once it dies right so uh, this is the dif uh, difficulty that is uh, present for treating cancerous cells right and what are the difference that our cancerous cells have from normal cells so now uh, we will see what are the difference between uh, a normal cell and a cancerous cell right the cancerous cells they undergo uncontrolled proliferation right uncontrolled proliferation means every cell the cells proliferate right they divide but they do it in a controlled manner but when this proliferation process goes uncontrolled this leads to neoplasia right this leads to formation of tumors which uh, in later stages may become uh, malignant or cancerous and how this uncontrolled proliferation takes place because these cells they are self sufficient in producing significant amount of growth factors right growth factors uh, we all know that growth factors are those uh, uh, cell uh, signaling molecules that promote the growth of a cell right and what these cells do they have the ability to escape apoptosis as i have just said that apoptosis is the process of a programmed cell death right the cell dies on its own when it's no when it is no longer able to perform its physiological functions 
So these cells, what they do, since they are mutated, what they do, they escape this apoptotic pathways. And what they do, they promote angiogenesis, NGO. NGO means blood vessel and genesis is the formation. So there is formation of new blood vessels continuously because in order to feed a larger population of cells in a particular area, right? When, a, when an organ or whenever an area of the body has more cells than it is designated to have, then the nutritional requirements of that area, it, they increase, that increases. And to fulfill that gap between the previous requirement and the new requirements, what is required? There is requirement of angiogenesis so that there is formation of new blood vessels. When there is formation of uh, when there is formation of new blood vessels, what happens? These new blood vessels they supply more uh, blood to that area, and the tumor cells start to grow. They continuously keep on growing. Next is dedifferentiation, right? What is dedifferentiation? For example, this was one healthy cell, right? This was one healthy cell, and it divided into two cells this cell was the normal cell this differentiated normal but this cell was mutated right this may have one or multiple mutations in the dna let's not discuss the case for this cell this is normal cell but when this cell will differentiate then the new cells that would form they may be identical to this cell or there are possibilities that the new cell that is formed may have another mutation right and when this cell will differentiate again then there are possibilities that it will differentiate on its own uh, like sorry it will differentiate the same way like the new cell it would be this or there are possibilities that it would differentiate into some other cell and when this cell will differentiate there are possibilities that this will be one cell and there will be another cell right so the number of mutation that may keep on increasing and we will not have only one mutated cell we will have a whole lot variety of cells that are mutated now right so this is mutation see there was only one mutated cell but over a period of time as this cell as these cells are dividing see we have a number of cells that are mutated Right. So, uh, and then we have invasiveness. What is invasiveness? When the the cells, right, they start to invade those area where they are not supposed to invade. See, let me explain that also. For example, this is our basement membrane, and these these are our normal cells. And below this basement membrane, we would be having our And below this basement membrane, we would be having our neurons and we would also be having our blood vessels, right? So what is supposed to, for example, I'm talking about the epithelial cells. So these cells are supposed to stay here only, but when there is tumor growth, these cells, what I have said that they undergo uncontrolled proliferation. So when these cells will undergo uncontrolled proliferation, they are not supposed to go only on this direction. They will move everywhere. And not only this, not only in this direction, they will start to move in this direction as well. And now what they will do? They will start to cause damage to the nerves also. The neurons that are lying in that area, they are also going to cause damage to those neurons, right? And over a period of time, when this tissue cluster will go grow even larger it will start to invade your blood vessels right and uh, this is one of the reasons like when patients are having uh, cancers in the GIT right they they uh, vomit out blood because the blood vessels they have been invaded by our uh, by the cancerous cell right so this so this is the invasiveness normal cells do not uh, invade other cells and one more thing uh, I, I forgot to mention like since these cells promote so much growth factors they lose their ability of contact inhibition what is contact inhibition like whenever two cells are growing two or more cells are growing in the vicinity for example this is one cell and this is one cell 
these cells they are uh, uh, right now they are in this stage and when these cells start to grow they grow slowly 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 and at a point of time when these cells they come in contact with each other they stop to grow right these cells stop growing but these cancer cell what they do they do not stop growing like they do not inhibit their growth while they uh, contact with some other cell right normal cells have this ability of contact emission while these cancer cells they do not have next uh, i have just discussed what is metastasis metastasis is the ability of uh, the tumor to migrate or to uh, a partial movement of some cells or uh, the movement of some cells from the original site of the tumor to some other site for example this tumor was developing this tumor was developing in lungs right and from here some cells they migrate from lungs to the now these cells they have migrated into the heart and from the heart they can be circulated to anywhere in the body and wherever they go they find a home and they will start to develop at this at at that site so metastasis this causes this leads to conversion of primary tumor what is primary tumor primary tumor is the original location to development of secondary tumors and what are secondary tumors secondary tumors are the tumors that are developing due to the metastasis of cells from the primary tumor to the secondary tumor right okay now let's move ahead so now for having a better understanding of cancer pathophysiology and what are the target sites where we can develop the drug molecules to act on uh, first i would like to explain to you in brief about uh, the cell cycle right so when we talk about cell cycle 